Taliban goes full Sharia, floggings, amputations, executions, and all. Um, recently, Zabuhullah Mujahid, the Taliban's chief spokesperson, said the Afghan that Afghanistan's supreme leader, Haibatullah um, Ahun, Ahunzada, made the ob obligatory command after meeting with a group of judges, ordering them to, quote, investigate the cases of thieves, kidnappers, and seditionists, and to fully implement Sharia punishments, including amputations, floggings, stonings, and public executions. Farhan Haq, the UN Secretary General's deputy spokesperson, expressed his worries on CNN regarding the Taliban's decision to re-establish Sharia law. Hawk said, they have not been living up to their commitments. We will continue to press them on this. We are opposed to the death penalty in all its forms. When the Taliban took over Afghanistan in August last year, after the U.S. and NATO forces left the country, they initially promised to be more moderate in respect women's rights to reassure the international community and the Afghan population. However, they gradually suppressed human rights and even carried out executions in public, either in Kabul's uh, Ghazi Stadium or in Eid Gah Mosque. Last week, the Ministry of Virtue and Vice also banned women from using gyms, parks, fun fairs, and public baths. So, um, Obviously, this is a very significant development and an extreme development, which is really important to cover. Um, and so for those who are not familiar in Islamic jurisprudence, we have something called hudud punishments. And it depends on the type of crime, but hudud, there are certain crimes that fit under or qualify for hudud punishment. And these are things like adultery or extramarital sex, um, uh, robbery, what else? Apostasy. So this this is very significant. This is significant news for us as an atheist organization because apostasy, apostasy, aka leaving Islam, possibly becoming an atheist, um, qualifies for hadood punishments. And hadood punishments for these kinds of crimes include things like floggings, amputations of hands and limbs, and even death and execution. Apostasy or becoming an atheist is one of those things that qualifies for execution. So yeah, this is, I mean, obviously horrible and extremely concerning news at large, but also particular concern for our community. Um, Armin, give me your thoughts. Well, I mean, it strategically makes sense, even though this does little to help Taliban get international recognition or like opening of the funds and trade coming to the country as which uh, Afghanistan needs right now a lot, right? Afghanistan needs a lot of money right now, very fast. It's um, facing a lot of uh, extreme poverty, even 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 worse than what Afghanistan is used to, which is quite a lot of it. But it could get a lot. It's going to get a lot worse for Afghanistan. So they need to be recognized by some countries so that they could trade. But they're not being recognized because of stuff like this. So you might think that strategically, what they're doing doesn't make any sense and this is like just islamic mumbo jumbo which it is but it is also strategic because the fear of poverty for these you know power afghanistan being hit by poverty is not as big as the fear of taliban's um, authority and legitimacy to be challenged and questions by its own members so its own members are <clears throat> did all the fighting and the dying and the martyrdom and everything for certain ideals and if those ideals are not enforced they're going to start questioning <clears throat> the entire leadership of the taliban so and a, an internal conflict within them is going to be is more concerning to them because that's the real thing that could like these Foreign forces not recognizing them, well, these foreign forces couldn't even defeat them. So them not recognizing them is going to just make Afghanis hungry. It's not going to make, it's still going to keep them in power, though. Like, they, they realize that they could still, you know, they don't need these regimes. Like, they, they're, for them, the mo highest priority is for them to maintain their power and the grip on power over Afghanis getting food. Um, and that's why 
based on their priorities, this may, what they're doing makes uh, strategic sense. Um, things, however, like this is really bad. I mean, it's technically Islamically the worst place in the world right now. Um, however, it's still not gotten to the point where it was uh, 20 years ago, but it seems to be trying to get there. I don't know. Well, uh, head in that direction because he decreed that these kind that, that it's mandatory to enforce this kind of rule of law. So this is just the announcement. We haven't even seen the fallout from this yet, really. Although, they, I mean, there are reports coming out already of public executions, of hanging the bodies of alleged kidnappers in public, of um, a lot of stories of people who've been accused of premarital sex being flogged in stadiums where everyone goes to watch and no one's allowed to film. So, I mean, a lot of this stuff is going on, but there was maybe more, like... It wasn't, you know, on the books. It wasn't, it wasn't on the same level that it is now. Where it's like, no, no, this is fully the way we're, that we're going, and we expect you to follow suit. Um, what I think is very significant is that some of the things that I was reading suggest that this is in reaction to the weakness of the security in this state and how the Taliban has not been very good at preventing killings by isis k and so that they need a way to show their strength and might again to the population what do you think right. about that Armin? that's a very good point actually this is what the islamic republic does as well you know every time the I israel comes and does something that shows that the Iran islamic republic is not as powerful like they do uh, attack iran you know through their agents or whatever and the Islamic Republic looks very weak. They 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 assert their authority in a different way from somewhere else that is not even re relevant, just to show like, hey, like remember we have teeth and we can bite. So don't you dare question our authority, right? So it might be like compensating basically um, to, to remind people who's like, if people are like, oh, you said you, you, Taliban Taliban's main sales pitch was not that we're going to bring you economic prosperity, was that we're going to bring you security, right? That's their main sales pitch. Like, oh, look, when we are in power, people are not going to steal. People are not going to do this. War will end and everything will go back to being peaceful. You know, you might not like our Islamic, how harsh we are being, being an Islam, but even the people who don't like it should enjoy the fact that they could now walk in the streets peacefully without somebody robbing them. Like even like even if you don't like our harsh standards, at least you will get to stay alive. At least you get to send your kids to school without like yeah. drones, U.S. drones hitting them or something like that, right? But we that, might be corrupt. That... We might we might force you to pay fees to use the highway, but we give you receipt for your corruption, so you only have to do it once. Versus with the Afghan forces of the well, previous government, used to like constantly have to pay out. But well, they technically they're saying that's not corruption bribes. because we're the government. No, it's not even bribes. It's like we're the government. That's not a bribe. That's the fee you have to pay that mandated by the no, government. No, but right? I'm saying so, in contrast to the previous government, you used right, to have to bribe corrupt officials all the time. But then with, yeah, because with, that with the Taliban controlled areas, they would give you like a, a some form some form of receipt. So at least you only had to do that like once. And so people yes. preferred that. I'm I'm just giving that as an example. Yeah, so basically their narrative is that this is not corruption because that was corruption because not, it wasn't even part of the government. It was just the police officers. Just You you had to bribe 10 police officers to be able to get do something done, right? But here under the Taliban, that was the previous regime. But here under the Taliban, we have, this is not corruption. This is just a fee that you pay once. And because it's like there's a system and nobody dares um co be corrupted because you know under us if you if you're corrupted you 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 get your hands chopped or die or something like that right so you're like hey less corruption right right this is not even like you have to pay a fee but that's not that's not corruption that's just a mandated fee by the government and it's less because you don't have to do it 12 or 20, 10, 10 or 12 times you do it one time um yeah but okay but the point was that um, that narrative, that sales pitch by Taliban is being challenged because ISIS-K is just doing its thing and just blowing things uh, up and left and right. And the Taliban who promised security cannot uh, defeat ISIS-K, right? Which is 
you know, which is very interesting because they claimed they acted like they're so powerful because they defeated the United States, but they now realizing that it's not, they didn't defeat the United States. The position was they caused chaos. They have to maintain stability and it's easier to cause chaos than maintain stability. Now that the tables have turned and you have to maintain stability and somebody else has to create chaos, you're going to notice how hard it is to defeat the people who are in charge of causing chaos. Even though Taliban is a lot more powerful than ISIS-K, uh, it's hard. It's hard for you to maintain stability. That, their job is easier. So I've seen some statistics that governments need 12 people and their armed forces for every one insurgent. Oh, wow. I didn't know that number. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so like, <laughs> that's pretty significant, especially for a very fragile state like Afghanistan or the, yeah. what do they call it? The Islamic Emirate, you know, nowadays. Um, one thing that's also very significant that happened before this news about going full Sharia came out is that the Ministry of Propagating Virtue and the, what is it? The Prohibition of Vice. Um, they banned women from using gyms, parks, amusement parks, and public baths. And their excuse for this is that previously to use these kinds of facilities, men and women had to be completely segregated. And they would do this by saying, okay, men can only go this day, women can only go on this day. And apparently, according to the Taliban officials, people were not abiding by the segregation. They were being desegregated and there were some women have, without hijab. Now, personally, I'm like, I'm highly skeptical about what your standard for women without hijab is. Like, it could probably be someone totally wearing the headscarf, just not covered head to toe, like in a freaking burqa, and that's without hijab. Um, but so... And then people are coming forward and saying they're completely lying about people not being segregated. Like they, they're just using this as an excuse to ban women from public life. When it comes to the parks and amusement parks, this is particularly sad because women are usually the ones that will take their children to the parks. So now the kids can't even go to the park either as a consequence, but the public baths is, particularly significant because in many regions of Afghanistan, what's difficult is, I don't know what, people have different conceptions of what a public bath is. Like in what I'm used to is basically like a nude spa, but I don't think that's like what is no. what's happening. That's no. not what's happening there. No. But what's no, significant about what... the ban of public baths is that many people, <laughs> this is definitely not what's happening. Um, many people don't actually have access to hot yeah. water or really or running water running water in their own homes and so yeah. public baths is essentially the only way in that they can yeah, clean. clean themselves yes. and so now women are banned from public baths so what the hell are you supposed to do and women need the cleaning more than men especially when they have their period and stuff right so yo <laughs> yeah no joke yeah so like yeah, I think oxymoron was confused about public bath as well. Like, no, it's well, not also like Islamic. It's like don't you need yeah. that for for your well, public bath? Like, you you have what? what it, no, no, that's separate. That's in the mosque. Public bath no, is just mean, where you like, go be cleansed, to be clean, especially regarding your period. Like, I think there are certain steps women have to undergo to be purified. Yes, yes, yes. They have for their to, prayers. Yeah, you have to do ghusl. Yes, but um. But that's a different topic. But like I know in public baths in Iran used to be, I saw videos of it like in back before we were born, the, you would go sit and somebody would come and give you like some foam and you'd still have your underwear, but you're like naked everywhere else. And then they will take the foam and they rub it. And then there's another guy will come and give you pour water on your head after you wash yourself. Like it was like that. I don't know. But it I was like a public place. Turkish yeah. bath. And it, okay, so this is probably different. But it's a Turkish bath and a guy is doing that, but he is kind of giving the customer like a massage, but he has him on a marble table and he's whipping this guy around this marble table covered in foam like he's a freaking fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. He's like spinning him in circles, whipping him back and forth. Yeah, 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 exactly like this. The foam, like this is a Turkish bath. Yeah, 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 <laughs> except he's like getting spun around like a 
<laughs> like a fish out of butcher. It was some crazy stuff. Um, Turkish baths are amazing. I have been yeah, to a Turkish bath. Too. It's like a, it's like a, tur yeah, the public baths based on Turkey standards are like a treatment, like they're like a sauna, like a, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. But that's, that's a different matter. But I that's not, that's, that's not happening in Afghanistan. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think like i don't know how do you what do you think your public bath in afghanistan looks like i'm curious i really don't know I, I, i'm 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 pretty sure it's not that it's not but oh there we go i there i see now wait can you it's zoom like, in on one of these i want to get a better look see they're wearing their look this this guy is getting a scrub okay oh look at it. it's like this this is a public bath yeah yeah they're all wearing swim trunks so what, so men have this now women don't have this anymore how the hell this are you is... supposed to get clean i don't understand yeah for these people who are coming to this public bath the the reason why they come here is because they don't have any other way to wash themselves this is so how imagine, you take a shower <laughs> this is how you take a shower this is like you don't have a shower at home right so so women have been denied access to this so that's great i find it highly skeptical that men and women were not abiding by gender segregation yeah in a place in like this in a, people so do in america if you violate that in america people are gonna freak the fuck out <laughs> like wait it's so, okay come on so the taliban is claiming that in afghanistan in a place like this women snuck in a place like like there was a mixing of sexes in Afghanistan. That's like, I do not believe that Taliban. I do not believe your propaganda. There's no way that in a, such a place in Afghanistan, there there were people would be sneaking in each other's baths. <laughs> like this doesn't happen in this doesn't happen in the U.S. Like Susie said. Like, <laughs> sure. Like I'm I am I am so horny that I'm willing to die for it. I'm <laughs> okay, Orman, you say that as a joke, but there that's a real yeah. thing. <laughs> Jake, actually, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. In general, uh, though, like, where do you have any predictions about where you see this going? Not predictions, that's a strong word, and I know you don't like it, but I don't know. I'm curious about your thoughts about how things move forward. I think it's going to get worse. I think the poverty, um, we have it, like, Afghanistan, based on what some experts say and experts have been shown to be wrong many times so i don't know how right this is but it's going to get hit badly with poverty like i know i know I mean, things it already are, is like overnight no 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 a... yeah but much bigger than what it is oh geez like you know how how big poverty is in afghanistan like we're gonna we're gonna hit famine level stuff that's so that's what people are worrying about like we people are poor poor right now in afghanistan but we're like talking about starvation mass starvation kind of stuff so i don't know if that prediction is going to come true i hope not but yeah you wouldn't expect i that mean we're all, we've, we've been headed well towards that for a long time now so yeah, yeah but well it's, it's people are saying it's, it's about to happen um and it's kind of it's bizarre for a country that is sitting on top of one trillion worth of rare minerals that Afghanistan is sitting on top of one trillion worth of rare minerals, and they can't get they can't one get the, access to one of the world's largest reserves, right? If not, no, 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 not not one of the the world's like is Holy Afghanistan crap. the world's but largest everyone reserve needs for microchips. No big deal. Everyone needs it right now, but and yeah, it, it, rare minerals for Afghanistan is what like oil is to Saudi Arabia. That's how big of a deal it is for them, right? Um, but nobody can access that because you need stability to be able to spend enough money to invest uh, in all the infrastructure that it requires to get the rare minerals out. Oh, Sina is just um, uh, celebrating his nine month membership by saying, did you know books are banned in Turkmenistan? No, I did not know that, but thank you for letting us know. Guys, use Super Chats. Super chats and memberships become members if you're not YouTube members and use super chats to support the news that we cover here and <clears throat> the way we cover it. You're not going to get that on anywhere else, especially on any other atheist channel. So this is like, if you like, we have a global perspective. Um, 
of the things we cover. So if you can, if if you enjoy seeing us do what we do, become YouTube members or support us on PayPal or Patreon in the description or use super chats. I don't know, like if you want, like that's good. Like Susanna has put a lot of work into preparing all this news for you. So if you want to show your support. Uh, yes, along with the sure. support of our incredible news team. Um, well, but yeah. the Turkmenistan book thing, I don't know if that's 100% true. I know that they do allow the book of, like, the supreme leader, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, I, I promised something I don't remember to highlight this because you didn't notice when she said, hi, Susie. Uh, and then she said, Susie didn't even notice. So I was oh. like, okay. Okay, she she really likes you. Something I don't remember. She really, really likes you. So, yeah. Oh my gosh, Selva Kumar saying atheist republic, Armin get atheist republic verified on Twitter. Well, we have to get our Twitter account back first before we can get verified. We're still she suspended. Is, we're still suspended. I don't even know if we should spend the time to get our Twitter back because we don't know if there's going to be a Twitter left before we get our Twitter back. So, yeah, we'll see. Yo, that's a whole different story. Like, what is going on over there? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Musk is like, I came here to flip table, chew gum and flip tables. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm all out of gum. <laughs> You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.